All right, what's up, everybody? So today I'm going to teach how to do dilutions in the form of an MCAT question because it's always good to see the types of questions you can be asked about very simple concepts. And dilution is something that actually does get used in pretty much every lab. And so knowing dilutions uh, and how to do them appropriately is also a very useful skill. So with that, let's go straight into the question. It says, suppose you have one liter of 12 molar HCl. Uh, how much water should you add to this solution to get a final concentration of 3 molar HCl? So basically it's saying we're starting with 1 liter of 12 molar HCl and we want to get a final final concentration of 3 molar. So if you look at this image I've drawn at the bottom, we're starting with 12 molar HCl. And molar, remember molar, what does molar mean? Molar is basically moles per liter. So it's basically saying we have 12 moles per liter of hydrochloric acid and a total liter constant total liter amount of one liter okay so it's basically there are 12 moles of HCl in here in this flask number one then we're gonna have to go to flask number two here and basically the question is asking we are want to eventually get to three molar HCl so how many liters of total solution do we need to have and with that how much water do we need to add because remember between one and two we'll need to add water and the question is asking how much water do we need to add such that we eventually get 3 molar HCl here. So the formula that should come to mind for a lot of you is this formula called M1V1 equals M2V2. Okay, and this formula basically says M1 right here, remember, look right at the mid left corner of the screen. It says M1 is molarity at time 1, V1 is volume of time 1. And then M2, V2 uh, is M2 is molarity at time 2 and V2 is molarity at time 2. Why is this formula true? Well, if you go back to our two flasks, right, we had a flask at time 1, that's flask at time 1, and then we also had a flask at time 2. And the point is, in between those two times, the only thing that is going to be constant is that the moles of acid is or are constant right because between time one and time two nothing changes even if you add more volume the moles will always be the same okay this is something we hit on earlier if you look at this one right if you look at time point one here the moles of acid here is still 12 moles it's going to be 12 moles of HCl here and then even if we add water, no matter how much water we add to get to 3 molar HCl, the, there will still be 12 moles of HCl even here too, right? Even if we add, no matter how much water we add, because moles of HCl is referring to particles, and particles are going to stay constant. Even if we add water, the only thing that's going to change is the concentration. So with that being said, that's why this formula is true. This formula is true because the moles of acid between two time points will always be constant, no matter what you do. I mean, assuming you're, all you're doing is diluting, the moles will have to be constant, which is why the M1V1 at time 1 has to equal the M1V1 at time 2. So with that being said, let's now plug in what we know. We know we have 1 liter of 12 molar HCl, right? So 1 liter and 12 molar. Okay, one liter is basically our V1, right? It's our volume at time one. 12 molar is our M1. It's our molarity at time one. So now if we plug these bad boys into here, then we'll have M1 and V1. But then we also says, the second part of the question says, how much water should you add to this solution to get a final concentration of three molar? So three molar right here. 3 molar is actually what we want as our M2, right? Because that's what we want as our molarity in our second time point. So now if we plug everything in, we get 1 liter times 3, or no, 12 molar. 1 liter times 12 molar has to equal 3 molar times V2, right? V2 is basically our volume at time point 2. And if we, get, if we solve for this, we end up getting that V2 has to equal 4 liters, right? So is the answer 4 here? Do we think the answer is 4? Are we done? We're not actually done because if we now go to our original drawing, actually, um, 
I'm going to just redraw it. If we go to our original drawing, basically what this is telling us is that we started out with, what, 1 liter of 12 molar, right? And it's saying us that if we want to eventually get to the, the, the way we solve for this problem is that it told us that if we wanted to get to 3 molar, we needed to eventually actually just have, we needed to have 3 liters or 4 liters of 3 molar. To have 3 molar, we needed to have 4 liters, right? Basically, this was T1, and that's why this was M1, this was V1, and this was M1 right and it was saying that if once we solve for this equation it told us this was v2 right here and this was m2 right so basically how much water did we need to add between these two time points well we already started out with one liter and we ended up with four liters so we actually needed to add three liters of water okay we needed to add three liters of water because when we solve for this question we plugged in M1 and V1, and we plugged in for M2, and we solved for V2. And V2 is the final volume, right? The final volume we need. But remember, we already had one liter. We already had one liter in the flask before we even started. And it's saying that if we wanted to have three molar, we, wanted, we would have to have a final volume of four liters. And to do that, we need to add three liters, okay? And so with that, the answer here is actually B, 3 liters, um, and that is the correct answer. All right, cool. See you guys in the next video.